Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Dialogues from the President's Corner, featuring Dr. Zarda, president of Greensboro College. So, Dr. Zarda, how are you doing today? Doing fine. It's starting to sink into a summer routine. Look, no tie. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, no, let me checking to see if it's changing everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, like you said, it's the start of summer, and we just had baccalaureate and commencement. So, with this episode, we wanted to kind of give, like, one last reflection on the academic year and, like, kind of preview going ahead with summer. So... Dr. Zarda, like the last time we were here, we were speaking with Jenna Avent, who was one of the coordinators of commencement. And I know one of the things she talked about, one of the, I guess, the concerns that always come up around commencement is the rain plan. And so do you want to talk a little bit about like what happened with the rain plan and everything? Yeah, rain, rain, go away. Come <laughs> back another day. Yeah, it is interesting. We did talk to Jenna about that. And this is my 15th commencement here. <clears throat> and this is only the second time we've had to do it inside. Um, it's a little different than in the past where, gosh, probably 10 years ago, threat of rain looked pretty serious. And so we moved indoors. But at that time, we moved into the special event center at the Greensboro Coliseum. Oh, okay. It was a terrible experience. It just, just wasn't, wasn't what we, we were like. This is the first time that to anybody's memory that we moved it inside into Huggins. And on the one hand, we did not want to do that. But yeah. the weather simply was not allowing us to go forward. It was very wet. And even though the rain slacked off a bit, there were lightning strikes nearby, and so we couldn't, couldn't risk it. Yeah. Having said that, almost everyone I've talked to said that overall, we did it and did it well. It was still a wonderful event. We had great speakers, all the joy of the families of their graduating, either seniors or master's degrees or whatever. And so we did it well, even though Saturday morning was almost like a military operation to yeah. take everything inside. It was quite something. I, I agree. I know we, I guess we didn't talk about it, but I think it, in terms of the transition, I thought everyone did like a, a great job of, okay, it's, so we're moving from outside to inside and like all the moving pieces. I thought everyone did a great job with that. And again, I think it shows the spirit of Greensboro College, the competence of a lot of people, but also their commitment to make it work. And it is a very special day for these families. And we, we did it. So I guess, do you have any like final thoughts about like the 23, 24 ac academic year? Were there any standout moments outside of say like commencement and baccalaureate? I think at the most macro level, I would say, Matthew, that it really felt like we're post-pandemic. Not that COVID is gone. <laughs> I got COVID in February after four years of avoiding it. <laughs> but the activity level, whether it be in class, on campus, athletics, the arts, it really felt back to a regular year. And I think that was important. A couple of standout events I would probably note was when we had the Ukrainian National Women's Wrestling Team here, mm -hmm. which was a unique opportunity for our student athletes and the campus community to, to engage. I think the eclipse, the solar eclipse, while back a few years ago, we sort of got shortchanged because it got cloudy that day. Uh, but we had, gosh, 100 people maybe out front, something like nice. that. Yeah. And it was really striking and it was really noticeable. And that was fun. That was fun to see. I think the other thing I would note is just by coincidence, we have more retirements than this year that we have had in some time. We have eight people retiring, some of which have had 20, 30, 40 years of service to the college. We celebrated all of them. But it is a time of transition. Yeah. And speaking of transitions, do you want to talk a little bit about like the approach typically at a college from academic year spring to academic year summer? And like, what does that look like outside of like no time? <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple things are usually typically underway. One is you have to then look back and things that didn't get done during the year need to get done before yeah. we start again. And that can range from curricular changes to facilities, uh, swapping out broken chairs in classrooms among the mundane. Facilities work is also pre fairly intense in the summer. As I think most people on campus know, we've gone through a year where we had a lot of HVAC challenges yes. in Odell, in Main Building, in Reynolds, in Proctor, in the library, and we we're getting on top of all of that. A little different summer this year in that rather than having a smorgasbord of high school camps coming in, we're not doing that this year. But rather, as we've talked about and we've done a podcast on, we have the governor school here yeah. uh, from late June to late July, where the campus will be full. Um, we will have 400 of the best and brightest students in North Carolina on campus and 50 of their faculty staff. And that's different. That'll, that's an interesting, cha wonderful challenge, but a pretty daunting challenge as yeah. well. And I was actually going to lead into like my next question about I know that the governor school is coming very soon. So I guess anything else, I mean, big events coming on campus in the next few weeks, months? Probably not at the scale of anything like the governor's school, but we have our own summer school, although much of that has migrated online very naturally. That's not something we've directed. It's just sort of happened organically. We will have some classes on campus in the PALS program, which is alternative licensing for teachers. Uh, we will continue to work with the middle college that's on campus to get them ready for possible expansion in the future, but more enrollment this upcoming year. Some coaches will have some clinics in the gym or things of that sort. 
Another event that will be happening is on Sunday, June 9th. We have been traditionally the, the kickoff of the uh, Sunday Music in the Park, mm -hmm. uh, sponsored by Greensboro Parks and Recreation. So on front campus, we will have the Greensboro Big Band. They always attract quite a few people, and there's some pretty good dancing that goes on, too. So that'll yeah. be fun. Yeah, I mean, I've seen past videos in past years, and it's a great opportunity, just people out on the bush just dancing to big bands. So that's really cool. And people bring their dogs, they bring their kids, they bring their frisbees. It's fun. So I guess for, I mean, we were talking about the transition from spring to summer. So like in the, like from like a mic macro level of like the college, what does that look like for like a college president? A couple of things are, are fairly typical. One is that there are conferences. There are some that are during the academic year, but there are conferences of the Methodist presidents or the North Carolina independent colleges that take place during the summer because we're not in regular academic session. Yeah. Uh, as I said, we had an unusual number of retirements this year, but also therefore we're onboarding more faculty and staff than usual. But there are three institutional level transitions that I will be directly involved with. One is the athletic director, another is chief financial officer, and the third is director of public safety or campus safety. Yes. And so that will be something that we do during the summer. There, as I said, there are facilities things we tackle, and then we have special projects. Yes. We will be revising our growth plan, which we do about once every six weeks. I will also, I'll be working with Emily Scott, the chief of staff and VP for compliance, to really do a deep dive into our policies and procedures to make sure they're up to date. Uh, so there is plenty of work to do, but it's really much more administratively focused rather than faculty and student focused. I know you, you touched a little bit on some of the things happening that, that students would see in the fall of like new faculty. Are there any other like changes or developments that students in the community will see come August with the start of the fall semester? I don't know if they'll see it, but they'll feel the right kind of air conditioning and heating in many of our buildings. As I mentioned earlier, that we've had those challenges. I'm very pleased at working with our partner in dining services, Chartwells, that Brits, the coffee house, will begin to be able to serve hot food like hamburgers and hot dogs, which oh, nice. will be nice for students. And then some brush up in the classrooms, new furniture, some paint, that, that sort of thing. Information technology, I must mention, mm. we've invested heavily in the past two years getting up to date with our information technology. So students will see some of that as they return as well. Now, I guess more of a personal level, do you, I mean, it's, it's summertime, it's vacation time, it's nice weather. Do you have any upcoming fun events or vacations coming up? Primarily family oriented, but not exclusively. To have four trips planned for the summer. Uh, the first is in late May with family in Northern Virginia seeing children, grandchildren, and so on. Yeah. And then a little later, same thing with other parts of the family. It's Smith Mountain Lake, which has become an annual tradition for us. Spend a few days there just over the border in Virginia. A uh, business trip will be to Mackinac Island, which is uh, in the Great Lakes. That is a how should liberal arts colleges be involved with the workforce development conference, mm -hmm. which, uh, of course, we have committed to. And then later, again, about every other year, we family vacation at Massanutten, which is in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia. So a lot of family time. And yeah. as I've shared, and I think people who know me know, we have a, Carol and I have a very complicated family. We're both widowed. We've been married over 20 years, but we have seven adult children, various daughters and sons-in-laws, and 12 grandchildren. Yeah. So this summer is a summer family for us. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad that you, I mean, because I have a family trip coming up too. So, I mean, it's the most important time. So definitely. So thank you again, Dr. Zarda, for joining us for this episode to kind of talk about the end of wrapping up the school year and looking ahead into the summer. Typically, we stick to a usually about a two week schedule, but during the summer, we're going to take a little bit of a break as topics and special interests come up. That's when we will be recording. So be on the lookout for our next episode. And thank you. Have a great summer.